Hey gang, Larry Bailey here. Hope you are enjoying your Tuesday already. It's June 4th, if you can believe that. We are here as a community. We gather every Tuesday, 4 p.m. Eastern. Hopefully everybody's doing well. Uh, if you are listening to this as a replay, thank you, seriously. Um, I really appreciate it. I know that uh, many, many, many people listen to the replay, which is awesome. Uh, Chris Lawrence wins again. Uh, you guys got to start taking him down. He's always getting that first comment in there. Um, but showing up live is also cool if you can make it. Listen, I know everybody's got a life, right? You've got a business life, personal life, whatever. Um, the importance of these is to really talk about things. And what we've been talking about um, for the month of May, and we're continuing the series through June, is to talk about your um, Encompass self-health check. And so today's topic is all about um, loan templates, loan template sets, itemization fee management, open time for Q&A if you have it, uh, and those kinds of things. So uh, first and foremost, before we get into too many details um, with the topic, I do want to um, thank everybody for keeping the conversations going in the community. Um, asking questions in the community is, is really um, one of the best uses of it. Uh, we are going to continue to make um, additional information available. So uh, part of that has to do with Encompass training for administrators, um, also for users. And, uh, and again, if there's any other topics that you guys would love to uh, really know more about, I'd love to hear from you. So I do have a pop quiz on this. I do have a pop question on this, not really a quiz, just a really question. And it has to do with, um, you know, admin essentials, right? And so, uh, you know, Ice Mortgage Technology offers education. They've recently updated their website. If you haven't seen it in a while, um, you should go check it out. Um, but I created um, admin essentials back when I created Kenzie May University. I opted to not repeat that kind of a thing with, um, with Mastering Encompass series because I don't really believe in admin essentials. Um, I created a web essentials course and I was just telling uh, Anna, who's on here now, um, she, she's really the, the <laughs> she's the reason why I stay organized. Like, so um, if, I, if I look organized, it's really all her fault. But in any event, I just said to her today, I said, you know, I feel like we should do a, um, a desktop essentials. So I don't like the idea of, of admin essentials because I don't believe in that concept. I think everything you do as an administrator is always connected to something else. But I do see where some folks want to understand, like, essentially, what do I need to focus in on desktop? Maybe you don't need to know everything. Maybe it's just a call out to some of the, the, the main topics. Um, but do you guys have a, a vibe on that? Um, if, you know, from a training perspective, instead of having to go through the whole admin thing, which is big, right? It involves everything. But not everybody does Consumer Connect, not everybody does TPO Connect, not everybody wants secondary. Sometimes you just want like a really focused in version of um, Encompass desktop settings. So that's my question for you, whether you're listening to this live, um, if you can update the chat, tell me what you think. If you want to get back to me uh, directly or um, if you don't carry the way, I'm okay with that too. Uh, but if you do have an opinion, I'd love to hear about it. All right. So uh, first of all, any questions about anything, go ahead and use the chat uh, and we will answer them as best as we can. Um, the, uh, so, oh, so Brian's responding to my thing. Uh, Brian said a lot of people asking for certs last year when I was job hunting. Um, yeah, and, and, and I bet, uh, you tell me Brian, but I bet they were asking you to see if you had the ICE mortgage technology certification. Um, yeah, and that's kind of where, so Brian's response is, I don't think essentials would carry the same weight. And I kind of feel the same way. Like if you're getting into administrative stuff, you can do the whole thing. The problem is not everybody wants to pay. And this, again, this is what's weird to me. Um, these companies have no problem dropping boatloads of cash on events. Um, but when it comes to training, you know, it's a little bit of a different decision for some reason. And so um, what will happen is help desk. So it might not be like a full admin. But if you're bringing somebody in uh, from another department and they want to be introduced into settings, maybe they're doing help desk one level two level something or other. That's kind of the the, the use case, Brian. So, um, all right. So let's talk about. I'm going to share screen, uh, but keep the feedback coming. Thank you very much. Uh, so I wanted to kind of talk through that. Today's topic is again all about loan templates and sets and itemization fee. Uh, so now your pop quiz. So here's your pop quiz. Uh, quick uh, on the chat. Everybody get ready. 
Um, how many loan templates do you need in a loan template set for a loan template set to be allowed to be saved? Anybody know the quick answer? And this is important because I talk about this. Brian says three, you're wrong. Luba, two, wrong. Um, Stephanie got it right. Amy's got it right. Chris has got it wrong. So the correct answer is one. Um, and you'd have to go back. <laughs> yeah, Lisa's like, how much worth would a woodchuck chuck? So if you go back in time, this is a, a super big deal. And I want to say it was like 2017, 2016. Somebody keep me honest. When all of a sudden now in your, in your milestone, excuse me, in your field trigger business rules, you could actually have a trigger where the, um, where the result was you could fire an action. And the action was apply a loan template. And so many people got confused on this when it came out because they were like, apply loan template. Well, hell, I'll just apply one of my um, loan program templates or closing cost templates. Like, no, 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 no. It's a misnomer. It's actually applied loan template set. And so when you, if you're planning for this kind of a thing, you can go into loan template sets and you can create a loan template set. But if you, if you just do this, right, it's not real. You can't click save. So it tells you right there, you need to set up at least one template. That's how, that's how you know I'm right. Um, and so what will happen is, you'll get in these situations where the business will come to you. If you teach them that information, they'll come to you and be like, Oh dude, when such and such happens, I want this new information to go in. And, and this is why this topic was really important for an encompass self health check was because when you get into the concepts of loan templates, um, and, and the loan template sets, the first thing you can do is make it too complicated, right? So, uh, I, I'm in a, a test, you know, it's effectively my test environment, right? It's just mortgage workflow partners environment. Um, it's, it looks the same for even awesome technologies. It's, it's limited. If I go into a, a real live production, um, you know, I, I've seen all kinds of different things. I've seen folders upon folders upon folders of loan template sets. I've seen uh, loan template sets broken up by uh, purpose and then by occupancy or by state. And this is what I want to talk about. And when I kind of gave the primer for this event today, it was how are loan template sets um, slowing down your settings and or your, your experience, your workflow. And the root of that problem is complication. So if you were to go in, into your own workflow, and this is probably too much to respond on chat, but if you were to go through your workflow, how many things does your user have to do to get the loan settled? And what does settled mean? The settled means it's got a program, it's got a closing cost, it's got an input form set, it's got settlement service providers, it's got documents, and it's got data, right? So seven things. And you don't always apply them simultaneously. Matter of fact, you don't want to. And the reason why you don't want to is because your workflow demands segmentation. So I'm going to give you um, a best practice, and then I'm going to show you what's the wrong direction um, for complexity. And I'll explain what I mean um, if you're interested. So best practice is you make sure your loan template set typically has only the things that you need. I do not ever suggest loan program. And the reason why I don't want loan program in my loan template sets is because it hinders the ability to stay simple, especially if you're using um, optimal blue, I mean, you name it, any PPE, the loan program information is going to come from when the, when the salesperson is talking to the borrower. That is after the loan is created. And so, if you include the loan program in here, you can't not include the closing cost template. Because if you include just the program, even if in your loan programs, you've got closing cost templates, which again, I always suggest in my setups, I got bad news for you because if I come in here and I have a closing cost template tied, which I don't think I do in this case, because again, it's not a real encompass, but let's just pretend I had um, that tied, which you probably do. This is not going to fall into the loan file by itself in a loan template set. So in case you didn't know, let me be the first to tell you that this is not going to apply the conventional closing cost template to a loan file. If I apply the loan template set, the only way to have that happen is to also include conventional here. 
this is the complexity that I warn against. Because not only does it create this uh, process to having to go through and create multiple loan template sets just to support your company, but when your business changes and they change loan programs, what's your team going to do? Are they going to apply a whole new loan template set or are they just gonna go pick the program, which, oh, by the way, should also carry over the closing cost template? So quick show of hands, <clears throat> pardon me, does, what does everybody do? Do you actually go through and do you have as many loan template sets as you do programs? Or do you exclude the program and let your team add that into the loan file outside? So Lisa, the purpose of having them both, you mean the purpose of why do you have to put both here, Lisa? So, um, so it's because of how Encompass works. Encompass doesn't actually see the closing cost template inside this program. That's the reality. So that's the reason why you have to have both here. It's the reason why it was built that way. Um, so some of the some of the responses were exclude the program. Uh, loan template set equals loan program. Um, so that's a one to one excluding 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 um, excluding. Um, most are empty, but have had program and closing costs. And uh, and Stephanie adds here, we have a loan program in the template, but we do not have a template for all loan programs offering. <laughs> okay. Um, so it's even you know, like a more convoluted workflow, right? Sometimes you apply loan template sets, sometimes you don't. Here's where I'm leading you up in this conversation. If you have the program in the template, then you've got your teams traditionally trained on either picking loan template set first and then going and only updating the program after um, or they're applying the loan template set while they're in the loan, which I'd never recommend. The reason why I never recommend that to apply a loan template set after the loan is created is because I'm worried about replication of things like a document set or a task set or overwriting information in the data template that was changed while it was while the loan was already created. The last thing I worry about is input form set. Um, you can actually create, um, as a side note, the, you know, you can go through and you can fire uh, off of uh, field trigger business rules if you want, but you can update the input form set, you know, based upon criteria um, as the loan goes through the, the your workflow. That's typically a, a really solid use case for having input form sets exclusively inside a loan template sets is just to update the input form set. But going back to what I was saying earlier, the, the reason why I'm concerned about this from an efficacy of your Encompass is because of complexity and because of change. Um, the more that you put into loan template sets, the less flexible you are down the road. So what's the valuable number here? What's the right number? And, um, and the way I back into this is making sure that if you were to go through and the business were to say today, June 4th, hey, we just got it. We're just doing not. This is a big thing, right? We're doing non-QM loans now. I want you to build whatever you got to build in Encompass to make sure that everybody can get access to those non-QM loans. And then in, and I don't know if this is going to be the case, but later on this year, they, they unwind them. They don't want them anymore because they've discontinued the programs. What do you got to do? You got to unwind all of these loan template sets, which could impact other things. Uh, pop quiz, anybody remember where you assign or, or don't assign loan template sets, just like other templates? What's setting in Encompass? Pop quiz for you stellar admins out there. So um, three, two, one, so user groups, right? Not personas, Denise, user groups. Appreciate you putting your neck out there. But user groups, right? So loan template sets are part of loan templates. Um, th these are all resources assigned through user groups. So now you're, you're creating more maintenance for time that you typically don't have. So um, when it comes to loan template sets, you know, first of all, best practice, you know, we talked about the, the talked about closing costs and programs. Um, I do talk about having one data template, you know, as a reminder, if you've got more, if you go into your data templates and you've got more than one, like this would never happen. Like I always create a master, but you should create one master data template that has most of everything that your, all your loan files would need. Now it might be different for correspondent, right? Because that is very little. It doesn't have your information in there. It's got the TPOs. Wholesale, it might be different from retail, but if you've got retail, you typically only need one data template. Do you have more? 
Is anybody using more than one? And uh, 11, so you've got all these data templates to manage, Brian. You probably don't know what's in all of them unless you're a total cyborg. And so recommendation for this is one data template and then use DDM rules to update other fields. Brian's not a cyborg. He just wants everybody. <laughs> oh. um, but the idea is if you've got all these data templates, you're doing that and now you have to support them into loan template sets, which is why you created them that way, probably. Um, but it's not something you need to do. And so um, so that's that's one piece. Um, and we've got two more things on loan template sets, and then we're going to move to itemization fee management. Who's got document sets in your loan template sets? Anybody? So who's got this problem in your file? You go into the loan, and there's multiple versions of the same documents over and over and over again. So then the business is like, dude, get rid of all those empty documents. So then you go pay a third party to build a plugin so you can automatically delete empty documents. Just don't put them in your loan template set and, and create a loan template. If, if the team wants a document set, if they want it, use a loan template set with a field trigger to properly, at a, the right time, populate those documents for your workflow. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things that Rob says he gets complaints either way, no win. I would, I would challenge that moment. So I would say to the business, listen, you can have it one way or another. You can have them there for you before you get there, and you might have a bunch of stuff you don't need, or you can add them manually, right? Um, so, you know, in, in Amy said, Amy adds, we have them for um, uh, data and document, um, whatever that is, DDA. I forget what the A stands for. Anyway, the old AIQ, the old caps on. And uh, when you have services, they might create documents that uh, at the end of the day you don't need. Um, but that's that's the second to the last thing that I want to bring up is is yeah automation thanks Amy um, data and documents automation last thing I want to bring up is the dreaded uh, milestone right so if we go into loan template set um, I hope you understand why it's a bad idea to ever have milestone templates in here when you do this it it puts the loan in manual milestone mode which means all of your wonderful business rules that are running in your milestone templates will not run on that loan file now if you've got a loan and you don't ever want to have to worry about um manual mode on your files because it's intentional or because that's the way the business has been right like i have a client right now um and that's the way they are we're working towards it but um you know, the idea is never have a milestone template in a loan template set because the only way to get out of this mode literally is to apply a loan template set that does not have a milestone template. So your milestone template business rules work. It's a nasty little circle, um, but you can get out of it. Uh, but that's that's it for loan template sets. Um, so hopefully this has been helpful. You know, I, I would say as you go through um, sometimes people ask me like, well, what's the right way to set it up? Like, what should you do? Um, for me, I, depends on the company, but I tend to work off of, first I work off of uh, loan type. Um, you know, so if I had conventional, I would pick conventional. Now, again, in my magical mortgage company that doesn't exist, I have, um, I don't have tasks because I'm using workflow tasks. I never have documents because I apply that later. Um, I do want input forms because I want that to be specific and I do have a data template and that's it. Um, settlement service providers, if you're using a third party, um, to bring back third party fees, you don't need that. Um, and like I said earlier, your program, your closing costs are tied to your program. You never want your milestone template because you want that automatic. Sean adds, we trigger loan template sets using business rules. However, I've experienced that when multiple sets need to trigger at the same time, we typically only see one of them applied. Um, I would agree with that. So, Sean, you said you, you, what it sounds like is you've got a cascade. So you're actually trying to figure multiple loan template sets at the same time? Like that I would probably avoid. So let me know if that's what you're seeing. Um, I'd want to understand that better too. So we can certainly talk about it in the community. But um, like I, if you know what template set is being applied, I don't know why you would need to fire more than one at the same time, but um, I'm open for education, please. 
All right, so any more questions on that? Keep typing. I'm gonna go on before we run out of time because this thing is pretty huge. I'm gonna go into, um, if I can click the right setting here, I'm gonna go into itemization fee management. All right, honestly, who goes in here for the map compliance fees and looks for your not mapped regularly, at least in some cases once a week, some people even once a day, depending on the velocity. Um, every month, good. Linda says, uh, yes. Uh, Amy says, quarterly. Uh, never. <laughs> Sean's like, never. I just wait for the email. Totally cool. Um, uh, Kirsten says, I do. I have many unmapped fees sent to my admin email. Yeah. So I want to make sure everybody who's listening to this live and on a, on a replay, I want you to remember that Maven is outside of Encompass. This table is how Maven calculates APR. And so if, in you, if you go in your, and I'm gonna show this even though it's, it's not really about um, compliance or setup, but I wanna make sure everybody remembers this. So the last tab here, the fee mapping, is a checkbox. And on that checkbox, right here, I always recommend it should be unchecked. Always, always, always. And the reason why I leave it unchecked is because we want to make sure that the, uh, I'm gonna address creating users, creating their own fee names in a second, Chris and Craig. So if you leave this unchecked, if the fee is unmapped, it will default Maven to believing that fee is APR related. That's the reason why that's unchecked. There's another spot also in, uh, in closing setup um, for audit, you also leave that. So a couple of things on this. First of all, when was the last time you logged in as administrator to verify that you do not have persona overwrite enabled for any persona? Remember, you have to log in as admin to see this persona overwrite tab that's not here unless you log in as admin. And I've caught people in surprise mode when I say go ahead and log in as admin and they find out their closures can self-type or they find out some other persona that they didn't realize because it was done before they got there kind of a thing, that that person can self-type. Now, the bad news is, um, Chris and Craig, um, John, if you've got any third-party integration, closing court, right, Lodestar, any others out there, if they've got access to your 2015 itemization, they're gonna put whatever they want in there. You can't stop them. And so that's typically where, um, where we see the, the challenge. And Craig, if you don't have third-party info for you, if you guys aren't bringing in third-party fees, you're weird. Um, <laughs> I don't know how you guys are staying on top of that, but kudos to you. Um, and uh, yeah, actually, so Craig just, Craig just like, it, you know, his experience in the past with Closing Corp was, was not ideal. Um, I'll tell you right now, uh, Smart Fees actually has the tightest integration with Encompass uh, Connect. A close second is Lodestar, and Lodestar is probably going to beat them eventually, I imagine. But um, it's extraordinarily tight, and it's very powerful. And if you ever want to automate your disclosures, you're going to want to you're going to want to you're going to want to look at it. Um, remember, ICE's integration is uh, Ernst. Ernst integration, ironically, is not tight because it's still Ernst. So keep that, keep that in mind um, if anybody's looking at the chats here. So getting back to itemization fee management, how can it slow you down? First of all, um, it can slow you down in, in your workflow. Remember that if you've mapped the fee, please make sure you check the boxes for the sections it belongs in. Does anybody remember what section PC stands for? Pop quiz, see if you're listening, all 35 of you. Post-closing, nope, not post-closing, Rob, but very close. Post something, but not post-closing. Come on, all you post-closers out there. Post-consummation, Heather wins it. Heather wins it, nice. Rob, come on, you got to pick up your game, bud. Um, Heather wins. So post-consummation. And uh, remember, these are sections that only show up on the itemization um, you know, at the appropriate time. So if you've mapped your fee, please make sure you're also updating the section because as a lot of folks on this call have identified, they don't allow the users to free type. But if they're allowed to select the dropdown and it's not checked, right? So if I go to this one right here and I've mapped it, 
they are not going to see that in the drop down, which means they're going to send you a note or walk by your desk or whatever, send you a Teams or something to say, hey, I'm trying to look for the appraisal field review fee. It's not there. Like, where is it? You got to make sure you check the box. All right. Um, very rarely, um, you can import fees. So if you do, I don't know if anybody's ever done this, but if you do have um, fees that you've built in your closing cost template, you don't have to like, you know, how do they get here? They get here because your file that you just ran a Maven on has a fee in the itemization that it hasn't seen before. So it adds it to the table. So if you want to kind of circumvent that and just kind of get to the root, add the fee to your closing cost template and then do this here and you pick your closing cost template. If you want to see the details, you can, it will bring open the itemization. So that's the way you can, um, you know, kind of skirt that whole experience and you can bring it in and then uh, map it, right? So if I just click uh, select, it adds in the CPL closing letter, not mapped. Um, the other thing that I tend to do is uh, I tend to use uh, other finance and other not finance. And, um, you know, not finance means not APR. Finance means APR, just drag and drop. And by the way, you can drag that anywhere the blue line is. It doesn't have to be over there. It can be anywhere, right? It changes. And then make sure you, you check whatever it is. It's, I'm sure it's 1300s. Uh, Craig asks, does it duplicate fees from the template? Duplicate fees, I don't know what that means, Craig. So remember, this is a fee table. Um, so if I were to go import fees from closing cost template and I were to go conventional, hit select again, um, does it create it twice? The answer is no. I think if that's your question, that's the answer. And the reason why it showed up in these checkboxes automatically, this is what it was on the closing cost template, and this is what I manually added. You got that occurring. Glad I could help. Last thing on here that nobody's been paying attention to for at least five or six years, maybe longer, is UCD fees. Um, this list has grown substantially since it was first released. If you're not getting any errors with UCD, probably nothing for you to do. Um, but eventually, this is whatever version the GSEs are on. If you do move um, over into delivering straight, if you are getting any UCD errors, it's because this table's not mapped. So just to kind of give you a heads up, if you're not getting any errors, don't sweat it. But um, if you are creating a UCD file to deliver to the GSEs or anybody else, um, it's because this is not mapped. These are not tied to sections. This is just tied to the UCD export. So summary, um, please make sure that this is always updated. Please go check your compliance review setup um, and your closing setup to make my opinion. Make sure that box is unchecked so that when somebody runs Mavent, if there is an unmapped fee, that fee is considered to be APR because it's better to err on the side of caution. It's my opinion. It's what I found to always work um, reliably. And then uh, going back to our loan templates, specifically um, best practice, yeah, we can save those changes. Best practice, less is way more, um, and use folders, right? So if you've got the company-wide thing and you're all users, maybe that's not the best practice. Maybe you wanna create a folder that's up in public and it separates out your current ones from your ones that are in development versus the ones that are um, retired or inactive. Mary asks, if the milestone template is not included in the loan template set, what is the best way to automate? Um, that would be through your trusty handy dandy first taste of business rules milestone templates. So this is where you make your rule and this is where you create your sunrise sunset, making sure that you've got your correct milestone template being applied. That's how you do that. And that's where you should do it. That's where you want to do it. Like in this case, you know, we've got um, application date, you know, on or after December, or um, or uh, the file was started on or after December. So I got for today, gang. Um, I'd love your feedback uh, again for um, anything we talked about today. If you have any questions, please ask in the community. And uh, I don't remember what next week's is, but stay in touch with the community for the events for the full month of June. We are doing, uh, again, gonna finish up doing Encompass 
self-health check topics. Stay well out there, everybody. Thanks for coming today. Adios for now. Bye.